G'day folks, in this week's video I'm going to show you from planting to harvest how we've grown some awesome spuds using the power of fish in our aquaponic system. So on to planting out the spuds. Now as many of you folks know who do grow with aquaponics, root crops aren't the easiest to grow in the rock or the clay based media grow beds. What I've done over the last 8 to 12 months is trial and modified dual root zone system. That's where we're using soil that is irrigated by water from the aquaponic system. Now for these potatoes in particular, what I've done is I've added in a layer of sand down the bottom of a fabric based grow pouch then added in my favorite premium potting mix. Also tossed in a handful of activated rock minerals. They're basically rock minerals with little bacteria in there that can make those minerals available to the plants. So once it's sitting in the grow bed, that sand layer will be wicking up the nutrient rich aquaponics water into the soil where it'll be available to the plant, along with any nutrients that are in the soil itself, giving it a bit of a double whammy, if you will. This method I have tried previously with potatoes, also with sweet potato grew a bit of a mutant and had very impressive results from ginger earlier on in the season. I do have videos for them and they'll be linked down in the description. Now the pouch that these potatoes were grown in went in around about the 7th of June. The potatoes that were actually used to start these plants were extremely chitted, I suppose is the best way to explain them, looking a little bit gnarly, but they took off in no time flat and I think we saw shoots after about a week or so. About a month later I harvested the remaining water chestnuts and the pouch of ginger from the bathtub and we added in two new pouches prepared pretty much all the same way sand down the bottom soil on top two extremely well chitted potatoes popped in and covered with a little bit of soil at that point i topped up the existing pouch with some more soil because this variety we're growing is an indeterminate potato meaning that it will set tubers all the way up to the stem right up to the surface of the pot or container it's grown in about a month ago I noticed that there was a potato growing right at the surface so I covered it up with a slightly thicker layer of soil because you don't want these potatoes exposed to UV sunlight. They can start to turn green and there's some noxious chemicals in there that aren't good for us to eat so it's always good to have a nice healthy layer of soil on top just to stop that from happening. Now that brings us to a couple of days ago where I removed all the pouches from the bathtubs basically 17 weeks from when the first one went in and 13 weeks from when the second lot of pouches went in. Now you can see we had a load of algae grow on the surface of the media there. It was was quite thick in some places. That was due to the roots from the end pouch clogging up the drain a little bit. That caused the water level to rise and that allowed the algae to form anywhere where the sunlight hit the top of the media in the bed. One of the reasons they were removed early is they had a 28 spot ladybug infestation which is a bit of a pest here in Australia. They chew the chlorophyll from the leaves and their young they also do the same thing as the parents and can decimate the plants very quickly. I also had a little bit of a blight issue on the leaves and I think that that was transferred from the large plant onto the two smaller ones so I just decided to cut my losses. We're around the other side of the slightly overgrown aquaponics now and these are the three pouches. I took them out a couple of days ago because there was a bit of an issue with the bed not draining properly and I didn't want them to get too waterlogged. As you can see not as much soil in these guys here as in the one that went in to begin with. Uh, this one here just started to die back naturally I think. It was aided a little bit by some of the blight issues we had and these guys here they were just ravaged by these little blighters down in there. They're the little uh, 28 spot ladybug larvae I showed you before. Just quickly before we start harvesting these potatoes, the fish wanted me to remind you that we do have that Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide. It's an online interactive guide where you can learn about aquaponics if you're new to the growing method. There's a link down in the description, 1995 US. It is fully interactive. Uh, basically you can ask it questions and it will present different sections of the guide for you to learn more about aquaponics. So do suss it out if you're new to aquaponics and you want to have a bit of a crack at learning how to start a system off the right way the first time. And we'll get back to harvesting the spuds now. So I think we will start with this pouch here. Oh geez, it's pretty heavy. I'll set the camera up and we'll tip her over. While setting up the two cameras, Jack decided to nick off with one of the spuds and have a bit of a chew on it, this little one here. So unfortunately when I came back I forgot to hit record on the camera with the mic. But nonetheless, we'll do a bit of a talk over as we harvest these pouches. Now this one here is obviously one of the second ones that went in, only for about 13 weeks. 
and as you can see from the plants they weren't looking too healthy at all. Now on to the second pouch and you might be able to see there's a couple of very small potatoes there. They actually started to turn green because I hadn't progressively filled the pouch as I said before. Now this green is caused by solanine and uh, it's an glycoalkaloid that the potatoes produce and in large amounts it can actually give us a bit of a belly upset so that's why a lot of people will tell you to cut away all the green that you see on a potato um, definitely don't eat it while this pouch wasn't a bumper harvest it did provide a couple of larger spuds than the first pouch did so definitely not as good as the next pouch we're going to have a look at but you know in saying that i think it comes down to the amount of damage caused by the 28 spot lady beetle and also the blight that they had and the fact that i didn't cover them up with more soil as they were growing but such is not going to worry about them too much because now on to pouch number three now pouch number three had a load of bulges out the sides of it so it definitely looked like it had the potential for a larger yield. To make things easier, I just trimmed all the green growth off the top of this pouch. And this pouch, by the way, uh, had been down for 17 weeks, which is roughly in the sweet spot for our climate here for potatoes. Now, I did try and pull out the stalks so I could have a look at a couple of the potatoes connected to them, like the last aquaponic potato harvest, but no such luck this time around. The potatoes were just jam-packed in there so tight, the stalks just broke off. Now it took a while, but a little bit of help from uh, Jack there, trying to nick off with one or two, playing fetch with them. Uh, we did get all of them out, and as you can see, some of them are rather large and very impressive indeed. Some of the largest buds I've grown to date. Towards the end here, I found some compost worms, just a couple, and they would have made it in there via the media in the aquaponics grow bed because the soil that went into this pouch was all brand new. Just finding them proves that there is a decent amount of biodiversity in these aquaponic systems we run here. So I'm just going to tear off this pouch for the uh, weighing of the potatoes. And there we go, we're down at zero there. And I'll try and do this as quick as possible. I think it worked out, yeah, it worked out around about 17 grand. So if it resets, we'll just take 17 grams off the total. So we'll throw these potatoes in quickly. And yes, I've made sure that the mic is part plugged into the right place this time around. And no, I haven't washed all the soil off. I really don't want to wash these guys yet because I'd like to store them. And I found just letting the um, soil dry on them and fall off. They tend to store a little bit better than giving them a wash. So we'll do all these ones here. And I'm going to do a couple of these small ones from the sides. Those small ones I'll leave out. And yes, this is turned off again. So we'll just remember to take 17 grams off. I'll turn this on. And we'll bring it up to camera. And what's it going to settle out at? There we go. 5.95 kilograms. Is this going to give me pounds? There we go. 13.13 pounds worth of potatoes from one pouch. These guys are going to be um, used, I dare say, fairly fast. I think we might give some to my mum and my sister for their household to munch on. And some will stay for us. And some of these ones around about this size here, I'm just going to be popping away. And we'll save these guys for the next crop. Probably around about oh, um, half a dozen to eight, or maybe 10 of these I'll stick aside. And we'll see how we go. Now as for the uh, other potatoes that were sitting underneath the camera that I forgot to press record on, um, I might, yeah, we'll keep those two. But these ones here, uh, we might, that one's a little bit green, we might just stick them aside as well uh, with the ones we want to seed and for the next crop. And yeah, um, so we've definitely got no, no shortage of suitable potatoes that we can sprout again. Um, weather is more our enemy here. Uh, we're coming into summer and things are a little bit too hot to grow potatoes, so that can be an issue. And that one there needs to go because that's the one Jack had a nibble on. So there we go, we've got three potatoes that we can use as um, seed potatoes out of that little harvest from those two pouches. As I said before, I'm extremely chuffed about this yield in particular. I mean, with a spud like that, um, that's gonna make some very nice chips or French fries, depending on where you live. So, you know, I, I don't think I've ever grown a potato as large as this one. So yeah, that's made my day, I can tell you that. I will show you a couple of abnormalities if I can get the phone to focus correctly. 
This one here looks like it's sharing some genetics with a sandworm from Arrakis. And this one here, I think this one was just pretty much all misshapen because of all the other potatoes pressing against it. It came from the center of the pouch. I did show both of these to the other camera, but as it wasn't filming, yeah, I thought I'd just give you a bit of a closer look at the moment. All the rest of the spuds though, as I showed before, are looking pretty normal. So I think this one is, yeah, just because it was compressed by the other potatoes growing in the pouch. As for the yield per plant, well, we got 5.9 kilograms, 13 pounds roughly. A uh, little bit of dirt thrown in there as well uh, from these two plants. So that's roughly around about three kilograms each or 12 and a half pounds each, 12 and a half, six and a half pounds each. So looking at the averages online after a quick search, one site suggested in the ground, you're looking at roughly around about a kilogram per plant or just over a pound, or two pounds I should say, and anywhere down to 300 grams for a plant in a container. So I think uh, the marriage of aquaponics and the soil, whether it's the rock minerals added or just the soil itself, with the aquaponics water is definitely a winner. And I think the other two pouches, the, the main explanation I can have for them is either the seed potatoes were a little bit too far gone when they went in there, and maybe also the fact that they got hit by the uh, blight and the uh, lady beetles a little bit too early on, and also I didn't top them up with soil, so they just didn't really have a really fair chance. But anyway, well chuffed with the harvest. Don't forget there is a load of other videos looking at dual root zone harvest from this system in particular down in the description below. And also a little card will pop up at the end with a bit of a playlist with them in as well. Uh, before we go, I really would like to thank you folks who do pop along every week and say good day down in the comments section. I really do enjoy saying hello to you all and having a bit of a chat about your own systems and whatnot. Thank you again to the folks who are supporting us through the various places around the interwebs, the Farm Your Own Yard members page, and also our YouTube membership community here on YouTube itself. And there is also Patreon for you folks who asked me to um, create one but haven't joined up yet. Just a reminder, it is there for you folks who only like supporting people through Patreon. But anyway, I will pretty much will leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy and your own gardens are booming, and I will catch you next video. Cheers folks and have a top one.